Kids run better unleaded. Lead poisoning prevention for pregnant and parenting teens. When you think of lead, what comes to mind? The material used to make weights? The substance in pencils, which is actually graphite? Or maybe even the element itself? What may not come to mind is poison. The fact that lead, when ingested by people, acts as a poison that can permanently damage the brain and many other organs in the body. Lead is especially dangerous for young children and can even be passed on during a mother's pregnancy to her unborn child, seriously compromising the child's future growth and potential. Picture a little girl like the one we're calling Kayla. She got her eyes from her grandmother, her smile from her dad, and her lead poisoning from home. You may think that these issues don't concern you because you don't often come into contact with lead, but millions of people encounter lead in their lives every day. Why? Because lead can be in the air, in the water, and in our homes. One of the most common ways that lead can come into your life is through old paint. Did you know that lead was regularly added to house paint? until a law in 1978 made it illegal to use in homes and schools? That means that this dangerous element is much closer to home than you may think. In fact, it may even be inside your home, hidden under a layer or two of new paint. This presentation will show you how you may come into contact with this poisonous material and ways to protect yourself and your child from getting lead poisoning you will find that lead is present in many of the places where your child lives and plays. So it is crucial that you learn what you can do to protect yourself and your family from lead poisoning. Tens of thousands of children are poisoned every year by lead in ways that could have been prevented. First we'll learn what lead is, how to recognize it in our homes and neighborhoods, and steps we can take to eliminate it from our lives. Next, we'll see how very young children, especially babies, can get lead poisoning and how the negative effects of this poison may be life-altering. Then we'll look at how lead affects you as an adult, with a special focus on its effects during pregnancy. The good news? We'll also show how changes in your lifestyle can make you and your child safer from lead poisoning now and in the future. Let's begin with an overview of what lead is. Lead is a heavy metal that is used in manufacturing many common items, including weights, TV, and cell phone components. Lead-based paint was used because it was easy to clean, durable, and bright. For years, paint companies used to advertise it as the perfect paint for a child's bedroom. However, the most important fact to remember about lead is that it is a poison that can seriously harm the human body. Although useful in manufacturing, lead is 100% harmful in any form that can be absorbed by the human body. When lead gets into the bloodstream, it travels to all the major organs, including the brain. Eventually, it finds its way into the bones where it's stored, but not before it interferes with the wiring in the brain. If it gets into the baby's developing brain, it can do enormous damage. Lead poisoning makes it hard for children to develop the social and intellectual skills they need to succeed in life. It takes only the tiniest bit of lead to poison a child, five millionths of a gram. These amounts are so small you can't even see them, but they build up in a child's body, sometimes over days or weeks. The effects of the lead buildup of these tiny amounts can last a lifetime. What are some of the effects? This chart shows the negative effects of lead poisoning and the problems it can cause later on in life. When your child is lead poisoned, she may have trouble learning, trouble paying attention in school, have a lower IQ, be hyperactive, and have difficulty getting along with others. Lead poisoning has also been linked to delinquent and even criminal behavior later in the child's life because of changes lead makes in the developing brain. These behaviors can rob a child of a promising future, resulting in failure in school, lack of employment, lifelong health problems, 
or a criminal record. All of this also means huge costs for society because of joblessness, special education needs, and higher health costs. So lead poisoning hurts those directly affected by it, and it harms many other people as a result. Now you understand more about the dangers of lead poisoning, but maybe you don't think you're around lead very often. The reality is that millions of us encounter lead in our homes, schools, streets, and stores every day. Does this image look familiar? We've all seen houses, garages, or porches with cracked paint chips on them at some point in our lives. When paint is chipped and peeling in this way, it often means that lead paint is present. Peeling paint on windows is very common, and it often chips due to the weather but paint can also deteriorate on the inside of houses as well. An easy way to spot lead-based paint is by the way it cracks. Lead-based paint chips off in little squares or broken up pieces, kind of like the skin of an alligator. Newer, latex-based paint that does not have lead in it peels off in long strips. Lead paint was used on other surfaces like porches and stair railings. Young children learn to hold on to railings to be safe, but by holding on to a railing with lead paint, they can get lead on their hands and risk getting lead poisoning. If you don't think that children play in areas where lead paint is found, look at these pictures. This is a picture of the window in a home where children were lead poisoned by eating lead dust and paint. So why would children eat leaded paint? Take a closer look. Do you know what these are? See the little pieces mixed in with the paint chips? If you recognize the cereal Fruit Loops, you're right. The children that were lead poisoned were taking their breakfast cereal to the window and eating the lead chips and dust along with the spilled Fruit Loops. A home is supposed to be a safe, comfortable place. But if any part of your house has lead paint, the paint could be chipping and spreading dust, just like the windows in this house. This means your baby's health could be in danger. Even more dangerous than paint chips, lead can flake off into tiny dust particles, especially from doors and windows which open and close. There is lead dust all over this windowsill. And with the fan on, that dust will fly all over the room, getting on tables, beds, cribs, and clothes. Think of small children crawling on the floor and putting their hands in their mouths. That lead dust can do serious damage. Now that we've covered the most common ways children come into contact with lead, let's look at other ways that this poison can get into their bodies. Lead poisoning can come from many sources, through the soil, through pottery used for cooking or storage, and even through some popular food and cosmetic products. Lead paint in houses is the biggest source, as we've seen. Most homes built before 1978 have lead in the paint. It can no longer be sold for use in homes, but in older homes it can be hidden under the latex paint and can eventually break through when the newer paint gets chipped or peels. Lead can be found in soil. How do you think that lead gets into the soil? On older buildings, peeling paint and chips can fall into the dirt and leave lead in the soil where children play. Before 1996, gasoline had lead in it. Lead was added to stop engine knock and to make engines quieter. But even though gasoline for cars doesn't have lead in it today, tons of lead from gasoline got into the air and into the soil before 1996. It is still there because lead is a heavy metal and it doesn't wash away or disappear. Lead can also get into the food you eat if you cook or store food or liquid in pottery decorated with lead glaze or lead paint, the lead can leach into the food or liquid. All of these dishes and pots were found to have lead. Pottery and dishes made outside the U.S. may have lead in them. So ask the store if there's lead in the item. If in doubt, don't buy it. It might surprise you to know that lead can be found in candy, in spices, and in cosmetics sold in many communities. Though these products are often imported from other countries, 
They're sold in the very same neighborhood mom and pop stores where you may shop. This is a popular candy still being sold. Sometimes people sprinkle this salty treat that has been found to contain lead onto fruit. Protecting yourself from lead in candy and spices is simple. If you don't know whether products you see on store shelves have lead in them, it is best not to buy them. In terms of cosmetics, be on the lookout for any eyeliner containing coal, K-O-H-L. When applied to the eyes, these cosmetics can put lead directly into the bloodstream, where it can begin causing problems, and some metal used for body piercings is lead. In some communities, dark eyeliner is put around children's eyes for beauty and because people think it improves eyesight, but it may contain lead and it can be absorbed into the skin and cause lead poisoning. Even our drinking water may contain lead. If your water pipes are old enough, they may have been joined together with a solder made of lead. Public health departments recommend that anyone with lead soldered pipes let the water run for several minutes before using it for drinking or cooking. Remember, unlike bacteria, lead cannot be boiled away and never ever mix baby formula with hot water from the faucet. In our next segment, we'll discuss who is at greatest risk for lead poisoning and why. We'll also look at the effects of lead poisoning on children and on pregnancy. End of section one.